You know, you never know what it is, what that thing is that draws you to that person. But you just let it happen, you know, and it, it seems odd, but, you know, it's almost like going out there and letting yourself fall in love a little bit every day, letting yourself be seduced a little bit every day. I grew up playing sports and slowly kind of got into fashion when I was in junior high, you know, I mean, it was a great way to uh, attract girls. It certainly set me apart from all the other kids in a Midwest junior high. Growing up, looking at magazines from seventh grade until, you know, now, without specifically trying to, I think you just pick up a visual dialogue, a visual understanding, and so it, it wasn't really the technical aspect of photography, but how it communicated to me, how it created certain curiosities to a kid in the Midwest who would look at Vogue or look at GQ and think, wow, that is really a different world. I feel very lucky to get to have part of my day leading a visual life. It takes X amount of time every day just to make the blog work, just to get everything going and get all the business of it done. But then the real joy of it is having those four or five hours a day to go out and just be in the world that you're in, see it, keep your eyes open and, and really relate to what you're seeing, react to what you're seeing. The fact of the matter is, you know, um, I didn't grow up dreaming to be a photographer. I didn't assist for anybody. I just kind of started doing it. So for me, it's so instinctual the way I shoot. The way I do it is just the way I do it. Excuse me, sorry. Do you mind if I just do a fast photograph? Are you just standing just like that? Um, what's it for? I do a site called The Sartorialist. Oh. <laughs> good, 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 good. I don't see a hundred images a day that I'd want to take. You know, I see two or three, and so for me, it's very easy to be patient and wait for those images because that's just the way I thought it was supposed to be. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I love you. your sight. Sorry, I didn't know Thank who you are. That's okay. It's the man behind that's the okay. camera. Exactly. It's always the genius. It's easier to recognize me looking like that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have Thanks. a good afternoon. My lack of knowledge in the beginning really helped and really just made me refine what little I knew to make it work. And you know, I think if you ask any other person that does a creative thing, you know, they probably go to school and learn all these different things and then as they get better it just narrows and narrows. You could ask most chefs, they would need five ingredients, one pan and a stick of butter and they can make the best meal you've ever had. And I think that's really where most photographers would like to get to, is not to have all that other stuff, but be able to create the most beautiful image they can in the most simple way that they can. When I look at something, I don't really think, you know, is that fashionable enough? You know, is that of the moment enough? I'm just reacting. In the turn of the century, there was a photographer named Larti who went out and shot on the street and kind of were documenting people of their time. And today, to us, a lot of those photographs seem so romantic. You know, we, we look at the old Larti photographs and we think, oh, everyone was so beautifully dressed. But if you went and asked somebody in 1910 and showed them that photograph, someone that had a real fashion point of view, and said, you know, how is this woman dressed? She might say great or she might say horrible. She might say that's so 1905. But we've really lost that thread. We can't really differentiate between what looks right for that moment. Where now, with the blog, I can take a photograph and have it up on the internet and share it with people across the world. 
people of this moment can comment on how they feel that looks, how that fits in, if it's of the moment, I think will look very interesting a hundred years from now. Good. The ability to be able to capture that and how that attitude is going to change over hopefully the next 30 to 40 years that I'll be doing this, capture something that we've really not been able to capture before. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. You know, because the internet is the world shrinking, are we all coming too homogenized? Milan hasn't changed, Paris hasn't changed, New York hasn't changed. So I don't think it's really homogenized anything, but I do think it's given us what I like to call a digital park bench. So many people you meet say, oh, I love to just go people watch, just go sit in the park and watch people. And before you were really limited to the people you could see right there in front of you at your park. Now you can go on the internet and look at a blog like mine or other blogs that are based somewhere else. Really the whole world's open to you now.